can see up here, all I did was I added, you know, basal artery and stroke. If I wanted instead of stroke to put, uh, say, you know, um, acute ischemic stroke, as we had, then I can just add that there as a population term. And by grouping this, I'm making it an or phrase. Uh, but right. anyway, I can make that phrase, I can hide this, and we will actually map those mesh terms for you in the software, as well as recommending those synonyms that I was talking about. So uh, here you can see there's actually a mesh definition for one of our outcomes of interest, right? I said that we care a lot about mortality. So if I click on mortality, it's going to populate the mesh definition here and show me nice. all of the synonyms that those librarians have mapped. So I don't have to do that work myself. Uh, anytime I just select it, by the way, this is our AI called RoboPico. Uh, obviously very relevant to the Pico discussion. Uh, what it does is it extracts the, uh, the P, I, and O, or the P, I, C, and O, from underlying articles from any preliminary search. So I just read a quick preliminary search for basilar artery, acute ischemic stroke, and thrombectomy, and it brought back the P, I, and O from underlying articles. So uh -huh, now I can uh -huh. say, oh, I, I should have added endovascular therapy as a synonym for thrombectomy. And I, all I need to do is click on it and then say add, and it'll pop into the interventions. Wow. Right but uh, back, to, back to mesh really quickly. Mesh is just there to help you automatically map onto similar concepts without having to know the synonyms yourself. And so some of that will be automatic. PubMed does this great background task called automatic term mapping for you. Um, and if you work through nested knowledge, it does it as well. But you should make sure you're bringing the right synonyms to the table too, because mortality is pretty well understood. But if we're talking about functional outcome, there's probably a scale. That scale probably has a specific name. I should do some independent research and figure out the synonyms for my more, uh, let's say, discipline-specific terms before I move forward and build a query off of it. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And actually, so that people know, uh, Nested Knowledge, uh, it, it, Nested Knowledge sponsored my channel. So, I, you know, I, I've, I've got a, a lovely relationship with them. I've been using Nested Knowledge for literature reviews that I've done. And uh, the nice thing about it is you can collaborate with your colleagues. Uh, there's there's a lot that's nice about it. Let me tell you what, we can talk about this for days, but uh, you can use this platform to build a lit review with your colleagues. You can kind of have multiple people contributing, not only to the search and the screening, et cetera, et cetera, but even to the writing so that you can ultimately land up with a an online living document. Uh, and it does so much, it'll it'll do your, if you're doing a, a meta-analysis, it'll actually create the forest plots for you. It does, uh, it'll, I mean, the prism diagrams that like illustrate, you know, I, I won't get into too much of it right mm -hmm. now. Click on the link below this video, check them out. Absolutely love them. Um, definitely worth checking out. Yeah, not to turn this into too much of a demo of the software, but once you get those Pico in the software, you're going to build that out into